This is Mike Cariasso from Snipedia showing how to make a Prometheus report. Uh, this is as of version 0 0.1.68. I'm going to click on the wizard button as it really is the simplest way to walk through these steps. Uh, this application is available both for Windows and Mac and should also work under Wine in Linux. Click on next to proceed and choose to load your data. Um, I have here a compressed zip file downloaded from 23andMe. Uh, the program does understand the formats from other companies as well as the compressed and uncompressed forms. Uh, multiple files can be loaded. In that case, they'd all be pooled together. This is useful if you may have testing from more than one uh, direct-to-consumer testing company. Notice then where it's going to save the result to. Uh, it will launch this file for you in a web browser, but it's still nice if you can go find this file on your own. Feel free to click on Out File and then to choose a different location. Here then I can choose the ethnicity. The data we're working with is for someone from Seoul, Korea. And as a result, we don't really have a, an easy choice here in that uh, it's somewhere between Chinese and Japanese. But the Chinese seems to be a slightly better choice. And really, it doesn't matter too much if we don't have a perfect one available. Uh, all this is really going to influence is the order of your data within the file and uh, not, not the actual content of the report in quite such a dramatic way. I will then go ahead and choose to pay the $2 for speed. This will launch my web browser and take me to Amazon.com. Because I've purchased books from there in the past, it already has my address and credit card on file. I'm going to log in typing my password and clicking on the button. At this point I'm presented with an invoice. It shows that uh, using my existing Visa credit card, I could change that, I'll be paying two dollars for a Prometheus report. So clicking on confirm and we're taken to a page within Snipedia which shows that uh, everything went well. I'm going to move this window out of the way and we'll see that here in the background the Prometheus program is still uh, running. Uh, it has begun to transfer the cache over. We have now 2% of the file. While those steps are uh, transferring, I'm going to move on, show some of the new features. Uh, if you've paid for a report, you do have two more screens available to you before you're really done. Uh, the first is that you could choose to show not everything the way most Prometheus reports work, but instead only things that are new within some time period. This is useful if you find yourself running the report every, uh, every month, every couple of months, and just want to see sort of a diff from last time. We'll proceed <coughs> with the everything report. There's an additional F1 report. If you have data for multiple people, you could do predictive crosses. This is still a little early, so we're going to skip that one also. I'm going to wait right here. We still only have about 31%. Uh, it seems to me as though I need to wait for that transfer to finish before I hit the, uh, the actual finish button. So we'll wait just a little bit longer. Okay. Prometheus has begun to blink and tell me that it is finished. I can now come back into this window and click on the Finish button. At this point, the wizard will begin to uh, hand off to the background thread, which is going to run for a while and go build your real report. 
take a look here at some of the messages as they go by. Asking Snipedia for all snips, this will take a few moments. It recognized that it was given a 23andMe formatted file. There's a note above that saying loaded cache, uh, 1,800, 345 keys. Just a measure that we did pull some sort of a file down from the server. And at this point, it begins to go off. Um, it would be requesting each of these pages from Snipedia individually, but because of the cache, they're here and much, much quicker. Uh, if you uh, do not pay the $2, you will see exactly the same thing. It's just going to take a little bit more time to get it as your client walks the pages in the wiki individually. We're pulling down um, genosets. Genosets allow us to talk about multiple snips and combinations. We've got literature on the uh, medicines here, and now we're going for the medical conditions. Each of these is reflected in a particular section of your report, and that report in just a few moments should be popping up in the web browser. At that point, we've launched the web browser. The elapsed time was 112 seconds. And I can see over here that uh, the web browser has woken up. It's going to warn me. Uh, Internet Explorer uh, sees an ActiveX control. In fact, it's actually JavaScript. Uh, but yes, we're going to allow that blocked content. We're going to let this run. And now you're looking at a fully functional Prometheus report. Uh, first, the link at the top takes you back to sort of the, the starting point for all Prometheus. The current version is here, 0.1.68 is what I'm working with. Uh, it's always nice to be up to the latest version. Currently, they're coming out approximately monthly. Um, while the version of the software is important, equally important is the date on which your report was generated. Uh, all the information in your report comes from a wiki and it's constantly, hopefully, being updated by many people. Uh, so the, the freshest information is the most correct, we believe, in, in most cases. Uh, the in file that was used to generate this, an account of how many genotypes we've uh, found literature for, uh, for you. These seem to be the most interesting SNPs. We actually have a mix of SNPs and genosets in here, but these tell you things we've found that look important. Um, they're, they're sorted because someone has come along and put a number on this fact. And so this first one here has a name of GS152, Genoset 152, and a magnitude of 5. That's the importance of it. And here's the text about it. Uh, apparently this person is a CYP2C19 poor metabolizer and will be breaking down some medicines more slowly. By clicking on GS152 here, we get into the text on this page that was originally used to make it. We can, in fact, take a peek at the logic that is involved in deciding whether or not this person uh, should see that text. They, they did satisfy this. And wanting to know more about what medicines are broken down by CYP2C19, I can click through and begin to see things like uh, Prilosec, Nexium, and Prevacid, as well as Diazepam and Plavix. So uh, I will then... Uh, back up to my Prometheus report. It seems Internet Explorer uh, doesn't want to give that back to me. Well, we know where we stored it, so we're going to just, uh, we're going to stop here and say that reading a Prometheus report is in the next lesson. Good luck, and uh, thanks.